So when you first get a film camera, choosing which type of film to use can be a bit confusing. But let's say you've chosen between color, traditional black and white, and C41 black and white that can be developed at color processing places, you've still got then these numbers on the film, ISO or ASA 50, 100, 200, 400, 800, 1600, etc. So what on earth do they mean and which one should you choose? Well, the ISO number is what is called the speed of the film, and it's the indicator of how sensitive the film is to light, with a higher number being higher sensitivity. So ISO 50 or ISO 100 film would be great in bright sunlight, but an ISO 800 film would be better suited to indoors or very, very overcast days. The reason for this is to take a photo, you balance your aperture, the hole in the lens that lets the light in the camera, um, your ISO film, and very importantly, your shutter speed. This is often referred to as the exposure triangle and each setting affects the other. So if for this video we stick with our aperture or hole as f8 because that will give us a good depth of field so it would be easy to focus and lots of things will be sharp on our image. If we use a lower film, say an ISO 100, to compensate our shutter has to stay open longer to get the same exposure. If we put ISO 800 film in our camera, which is much more sensitive to light, get the same exposure our shutter speed would have to be much faster. And you may well say, well, so what? If my camera settings, or I, you know, changing my camera settings, can compensate for different ISO film, why don't I just shoot with one speed of film and have different shutter speeds? Well, the answer is that you will have problems with camera shake, subject movement, and film grain. If you're hand-holding your camera, your photos will get blurry because of the inherent shaking in your hands and movement in your body, you know, breathing and just rocking up from foot to foot. And the way that you can kind of work it out is it's one over the focal length of your lens. And I'd roughly, roughly double this to be safe. So to explain that, if you're shooting with a 50 millimeter lens, shoot at least at 1 50th of a second or the nearest shutter speed. But I'd say double it to the closest shutter speed. So probably 1 1 25th. If you've got a longer lens, then the effect is, is, is more. So say you had a 135 millimeter lens on because you're doing some nice portrait work, then the minimum would be the nearest to 1 one thirty one hundred thirty fifth of a second. So probably 1 250th, but I'd probably go higher to 1 500th to be, to be sure. You can then see that with a slower film, say ISO 100 or 200, but especially ISO 50, Unless it's a very sunny day, you won't be able to use a high shutter speed. So your photos will be blurry because of the movement in your hands and body. You could, of course, use a tripod, but that would just be for like static subjects, landscapes, architecture, or still portraits. And we've got to add something else into the mix as well, moving subjects. A person walking around needs a minimum of about 1 125th of a second to make them look sharp. A runner, at least a 500th, and a car, you're looking you know, at least a 1 1,000th of a second. Otherwise, you'll have subject blur. So you can see that for moving subjects, you're simply going to have to use a faster film to capture the action. Otherwise, every photo will have motion blur in it, which you know you may want and can look nice, but it's nice to be able to take control of the look of your photos. Finally, grain. As a film gets faster, it, in other words, if it gets more sensitive to light, it gets grainier. Now, this can be a great look, but if you want high-resolution, fine-grained photos with smooth contrast and gradual textures, you'll have to use a low ISO film, say ISO 50, 100, or probably 200. And this is especially true of color film, which starts getting grainy pretty quick. So, as the ISO numbers are going up, the sensitivity of the film is doubling. So ISO 200 is twice as sensitive as 100, 400 twice as 200, and 800 is twice as sensitive as 400. This means that our uh, 800 speed film is eight times more sensitive than our ISO 100 film. So you can kind of start to visualize that ISO 100, as we said before, is really good for bright sunny days, and ISO 800 for extremely dull days or indoors. You'd use ISO 100 for still subjects, and ISO 800 for fast moving ones and ISO 100 for low grain photos with ISO 800 if you wanted high grain images. Okay, so I hope I haven't put you off with some of the technicalities behind choosing the right ISO or speed film for your camera. Basically, it comes down to if you're shooting in bright sunny days 
or on a tripod of still subjects. You know, so with those, you could still go with ISO 50 or 100. But if it's faster subjects or on overcast days, ISO 400 or 800. Just make sure when you're going with really fast film that your camera has a setting for it. And you might find that if you then start shooting outside with a fast film on sunny days, you may run out of fast shutter speeds and get overexposed photos. So now you're going to wonder, what's my go-to film speed? Well, I live in overcast England, so depending on whether it's black and white or colour, I prefer to shoot with ISO 400 film um, because that gives me fast enough shutter speeds for most situations and works great with compacts like the Olympus Chip 35. But to be honest, I shoot with whatever I've got and then compensate my shutter and aperture and technique to try and avoid camera shake or subject blur. So at the moment, my most common black and white film I'm using, because I've got lots of it, is FP4 Plus um, 125, but I've got loads of Ilford Pan 50. So obviously when I'm using that, I'll be using a tripod, and I've got a lot of uh, Kodak Color Plus 200, so you know that's, again, a slower one. Anyway, that's enough from me. Stick any questions or comments down below. Please subscribe. And I'll see you again soon.